I'm uh, I'm kind of, I'm really excited about today's lecture. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it too. Um, okay, so we um, on on Monday we I introduced this problem. Okay, we want to decipher a coded message. Okay, and so let's say this is the text that you receive. All right, it's all um, it's. We, there's some original message that we don't know. We don't know what the original message is. And it was, we got, we received this. This was created using what we call a substitution cipher. Okay, it was created using a substitution cipher, which means each letter in the alphabet was substituted by another letter. Okay, and we wanna be able to try to decipher this. Okay, and this is, so this is again, very different from modern day encryption, which is way more complicated, but I think this is still an interesting problem and we want to try to figure out, you know, what was, what was the original message here, right? So, you know, on Monday, I, I talked about how we're going to evaluate a potential cipher mapping. And, um, and so here is, let's say this is one potential cipher mapping. Okay. So this is the A turns into an H, the B turns into a T, the C turns into an N, okay? So if we assume this mapping is correct, then the original text would have been this, okay? Because if you, if you look at this, if this is the original text and we apply this cipher mapping to it, okay? So we say K becomes Z and then uh, B becomes T and D becomes um, R, you know, this is, this is how we get this, this is the, the message. So this is the message we intercept and we assume this was the cipher mapping that was used, then that means this must have been the original message. So what do you think? Do you think this was the original message that people were trying to send to each other? Probably not because this doesn't look like any kind of message that people <laughs> would try to send, right? So. So we evaluate the probability that this was the original text. And, uh, and on Monday, we talked about using Bayes' rule. And basically we said the probability of this particular cipher key mapping given the text is gonna be proportional to the text given the cipher key mapping, okay? Because of Bayes' rule, we said the prior probability is uniform, so that's just a constant. The denominator in Bayes' rule is also just a constant. So it's really just gonna be proportional to the likelihood. Okay. All right. So far, so good. All right. Okay. And so we said, how do we evaluate? How are we going to evaluate the probability of the text? Okay. Or the likelihood of the text given kind of the cipher mapping. So this is, this is the likelihood. And on Monday, um, we said, we're going to look at the likelihood of two letter combinations found in the quote unquote original text, right? So, so again, if this mapping is assumed to be correct, then the original text would have been this KBDKE. And so we would have gone through and we would have looked at all every single two letter combination. We would have said, okay, what's the probability of seeing KB, right? So how many words have the sequence KB? I don't know. Is black box one word? Maybe, I guess, I don't know. Um, okay, but anyway, uh, how many have uh, BD? Um, I don't know. I, I'm sure we could think, of, sit, sit around and think of words that have these letter combinations, but overall we would say these letter combinations aren't super common, right? Like, we're, you know, TH, TH is a lot more common, you know, IN and stuff like that, a lot more common. But anyway, we, we look at, basically every single one of these two letter combinations, some of these are gonna be like very low probabilities like QS, you know, QS and, or I'm sorry, um, uh, KQ, all right? So th these are gonna be, you know, Q QD, these are, these are bad um, letter combinations, okay? So I don't know why my dog's barking. He's fine, he's just grumpy right now, okay. So um, to, to estimate, kind of to figure this out, um, we're gonna take the entire text of War and Peace, the English translation of War and Peace, and we're gonna go through War and Peace line by line and tally up 
um, tally up the uh, the things. Hang on, give me a second, guys. Let me check on my doc. Okay, so uh, we'll take you know the entire English translation of War and Peace, and we're going to kind of look at every kind of two-letter combination there, and we're going to kind of tally them up to get, kind of get a sense. And, and I think I showed you guys the the resulting map on on Monday. Okay, and you know, we'll return the log likelihood, which will be the, the sum of basically the log probabilities of each of these things, right? So normally it would be the product of all of the probabilities <clears throat> of every single thing, but um, but we would end up with this really tiny number close to zero. And so we'll take the log of everything and we'll just get this really kind of negative number. And then we're also gonna look also at the likelihood of any real words that we find in the original text. So we would kind of look through here and we'd say, are there any words that are like real words? And I guess like GE might, might be something, okay might be something, okay? But we also have a bunch of like nonsense words, right? Like these are not, these are not real words. So, um, so GE, we have this lexical database, which uh, I've kind of compiled using, um, the Wiktionary, uh, which is the like Wikipedia, but the dictionary, and um, and some other unknown sources. I, there was like a lexical database that was available from this textbook, and um, and I kind of combined it with that. And so GE appears in there. Uh, it's got a pretty low probability. It's not like a commonly used word. Uh, I guess OK would probably appear there with some higher probability. But pretty much everything else is like nonsense words. OK. And so, um, and and so these nonsense words, we don't want to say they have zero probability because if you take log of zero, you get negative infinity, and that's going to break our our thing. Um, so we just give it a very low probability. I might say something like one times ten to the negative ten, or something like that. Okay. And so um, we're going to kind of the the total probability or likelihood of our text is going to be you know. Um, the, the text given the cipher mapping is going to be the log likelihood of the, the two letter combos plus some kind of constant multiplied by the log likelihood of the words. Okay. And this constant here, the scale is going to, is a, it's a factor to kind of balance whether we favor having uh, letter combinations, like common letter combinations. Is that more important or do we favor having actual words is that is that more important okay um the, this scale is going to be end up uh kind of being small like maybe around 10 percent or seven percent something around there because um the probabilities of the two letter combos like there's only a total of 729 possible combos 27 by 27 whereas as far as the words go there's you know on on some order of like 80,000 words and so if you look at the individual probability of any kind of word, it's like, you know, 10 to the negative five, 10 to the negative six. Whereas probabilities of even like the most rare letter combinations is, you know, ma magnitudes greater. Um, okay, is that all right? So this is how we're evaluating our, um, the likelihood of the text. And I, I think we covered this on Monday. Okay, so so how are, how is this going to work, right? So there's approximately ten to the twenty six, four times ten to the twenty six, twenty six factorial cipher possible cipher key mappings that we could use, and it would be super inefficient to just try to like randomly try a random mapping and then evaluate it, right? Like if I just if I just randomly shuffle these letters and I say, hey, let's try this out. Is this any good? And then I try out another one and I say, let's, here's like another random shuffling. Is this one any good? Or here's another one where I tried, right? And I say, okay, if this is our coded text, if we assumed this was the mapping, then the original text would have been this, right? Because K becomes the Z and B becomes uh, T and stuff. And we need, we need to figure out what this says, right? Z, it goes Z, T. And, um, and over here, it, what it, is this the original mapping? Because if if this were the original original mapping, then the original text would have been this. Right? Okay, we would have got you know this is not it's impossible to read here. 
um, if this were the original mapping, then this would have been the original text, okay? All of these things are complete nonsense gibberish, <laughs> all right? And are any of these like better than another? It, it's just, it's just not going to be any good, right? So these are all junk. We might be able to say, all right, so far, this one's the one that looks the best. I, you know, I'm, I haven't actually run these through the algorithm or something, okay? And we might, or, you know, probably this one's the best because I see words like, oh, and of, and that that's like, okay, that's that's pretty good, <laughs> you know? Um, but, but it's also complete trash, right? So um, how are we supposed to find a good mapping? And so this is where the Metropolis algorithm comes in, right? Because I'm trying to tie this back to the Metropolis algorithm. And so rather than trying to get completely new random mappings, what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever current mapping we have, OK? So right now, this is our current mapping. And we're going to propose a new mapping based on the current mapping. OK, so the Metropolis algorithm, you start, you have your current state. And based on your current state, you propose a new value, right? And, and this is basically what, what it is. It's just our states are not numeric, OK? We're not like in this unidimensional numeric setting. We're in this weird 26-dimensional hyper, uh, 26, you know, hyperspace, 26-dimensional hyperspace, where, you know, every dimension is a letter being matched with some other kind of letter. And it's you know not not exactly numeric, but it's a it's a very big space. There's a whole bunch of states to test out, but we don't want to try to test out all of them. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to start in some arbitrary location. We have no idea if this is any good or bad, and instead of just randomly teleporting somewhere else in this hyperspace, we're going to just start here and then just propose a new location that's maybe better or worse than where we are. And we're gonna just take two letters and we're gonna swap them, okay? We just propose two letters. So here I'm gonna say, let's propose swapping the B and the E, okay? So again, this is kind of the original mapping. And if this was the original mapping, I would have gotten K, B, D, K, E, O, Q, F, A, K, D, O, Q, F, D, G, C, K, G, E, B, G, D, D, G, C, K. Okay, so this is all garbage. Okay, and if I throw this into the algorithm, it would give me a log probability of negative 1,807. Okay, so you know it's a very small thing, and so I say, all right, what if I swapped? So this this mapping and this mapping are exactly the same, except I've swapped where the E and the B map to. Okay, so if I used this mapping. If this were the original, if this were the correct mapping, then the corresponding original text looks almost the same, okay? K, K, B, D, K, E, all right? The corresponding letters basically E went to G and B went to, or, or G went to E and O went to B uh, instead of G going to B and O going to E. So the original text would have become this, right? And then so instead of O, Q, F, A, K, D, we would have gotten G, Q, F, A, K, D. Um, but now we get a couple things, like a couple things improve, like instead of DG, we get do, and, uh, and we get bod and do, and, um, you know, this is not, this is not a real word, but we get something that looks almost like it could be a word, bow cake or something, right? Like it's kind of got the placement of consonants and vowels that, so we feel like, all right, this is, this feels like an improvement, right? This feels like an improvement over this. Even these are both nonsense, but this one feels like it's an improvement because now we have at least a few things that um, that look like th this looks a little bit more closer to English than than what what we had up here. Okay, still bad. Okay. And if I, if I run this and I say, calculate what's the probability of this text, okay? and again, we're calculating the probability of text using the two letter combinations and the, you know, do we see any real words? And so we get a few, like our two letter combinations have improved a little bit because instead of getting a whole bunch of DG, 
which you know exists in English, like dodge and budge and things like that. DG as a letter combo, but I would say DO is probably a more com uh, common letter combination. And then we also see some real words like do and bod, and and things like that. Okay, and so that improves our log probability. Is that okay? And so what the Metropolis algorithm does is it says basically, you know, what is probability of the proposed location? And what's the probability of the current location? And if the proposed location has a higher probability than the current location, you always move there, right? Like you always accept if the proposed location has a higher probability than the current location. So, so we're going to say, all right, this is our proposed mapping. We're going to accept it. We're going to move there, OK? And, um, and so we're going to accept the proposed mapping. And, and we're going to kind of repeat this process. And so when we, when we do the uh, Metropolis algorithm, uh, we, um, you know, sometimes we'll allow for letter swappings that are less optimal, right? Like if, if we swap some letters and it ends up in a, in a less great location, we still might accept it, okay? And we're going to accept it with probability proposed versus probability current. So if, you know, if we swap something back or something, you know, we would get some, the, the proposed location could be lower, proposed location could be higher. And you know, if it's if it's better, we'll definitely take it. And if it's worse, we might take it. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. All right, is that okay as far as how the Metropolis algorithm is going to work here? Um, so just a computational thing that we have to keep in mind is that these probabilities, like if you calculate the if you did the product, the probabilities of these things end up being really, 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 really tiny. Like um, proportions that are almost probabilities that are almost close to zero. And so um, sometimes we run into like machine epsilon problems, right? Like the computer can only represent values that are so small. And so um, instead of dealing with the probabilities directly, we're going to deal with the log probabilities. So instead of doing u is less than or equal to, um, or you know, being less than p proposed to divided over p current, we're going to do log u less than log probability of the proposed minus the log probability of the current. Okay, so so these these two things are equivalent, and we're gonna you know we're gonna accept or move um, if this is the case. All right, and so I wrote a bunch of stuff here, and I said the Metropolis algorithm is great because what we do is we're building off of previous states. If we just did true random sampling, we have like a one in twenty six factorial chance of ever hitting the correct mapping by random chance. Okay. So instead, what we do is we take our current mapping, we propose swapping two letters. If the letter swap results in a better map, the Metropolis algorithm will accept it. And if it results in a lower probability, the Metropolis algorithm might accept it. Okay. And so, you know, the Metropolis algorithm will naturally gravitate towards areas of higher probability and kind of there's almost like a little bit of like continuous improvement. Sometimes we take a step back, but in general, uh, if things are um, get better, we'll, we move in that direction, okay? And so, um, and so even if we have a poor starting location, it can still kind of navigate towards areas of higher probability, right? And so, you know, in your homework that I guess is due today, but you probably saw this, is that we could start the chain, you know, we, we said we wanted to sample values from a normal distribution centered at 15, and we gave it this really bad starting location of 100, okay? And so when you started off at 100, the probability of that location is super, super, super low, and it's a terrible location, but you can just kind of propose values, like do I move closer to zero or move farther away from zero? And it's gonna say, you you know, when you're out at 100, move closer to zero and things like that. And so, um, so even if you start off in a terrible location, it eventually ends up kind of in the right location, right? And that, that's one of the really cool things about the Metropolis algorithm is you can start off like having no idea where I should start. And then if you, as, as long as you give it a good way to kind of measure probability, it can start to kind of navigate towards, um, towards a better area, okay? Um, one thing to note is that technically our deciphering algorithm is more of an optimization problem, right? We're trying to find a mapping that results in, that kind of optimizes or maximizes the probability of the original text, 
okay? And on the other hand, if, if you think about it, the Metropolis algorithm is used to produce random samples from a distribution, okay? Um, and here we're not trying, the thing of interest isn't really <laughs> the random values from the distribution, but we're just trying to find what area of the distribution has higher probability, okay? And so what we're doing is we're gonna use the Metropolis algorithm to kind of search over the area to get us to a region where there's higher probability, okay? And so it's not really an optimization algorithm, but it, it does help you find, the Metropolis algorithm can help you find areas of higher probability. All right, and then so, um, so I have code and I've posted it online on CCLE. And, uh, and one thing to note is that when you use the algorithm, sometimes you can get stuck in a local max area where the mapping is terrible um, and it produces nonsense, but any kind of proposed letter swapping just results in worse mapping. So, so that's also a possibility. And uh, you know, if that happens, uh, you might just need to restart the chain with a different random seed. So, so you know, we're gonna kind of take a look at this. Okay, is that all right? Oh, you know what? Let me give you um, quiz answers for today's quiz. Uh, D and E will be your first two quiz answers. Dog and elephant. D and E, dog and elephant. First two quiz answers for today's quiz. Okay, so I have um, some code set up here. Um, I've also, uh, let me see. I put this on CCLE, okay? So on CCLE, there is the R script. I have the uh, War and Peace text file, which I've taken straight from Project Gutenberg. You can see it right here, okay? Um, I've also had the results of the kind of the two letter transition probability matrix that is derived from War and Peace. And then you'll also need this uh, lexical database, uh, which I've kind of compiled using a couple sources, one being uh, the Wiktionary. The Wiktionary has this um, kind of word frequency list where it says, you know, the word shows up this many times um, and stuff like that. So the most common words are the, of, and, to, in, I, that was, his, he, it, with, is, for, as, had, you, not, be, her, on, at, by, which. Okay, so anyway, these are the most common most common words and things like that. Um, okay, so so you, you can you can run this um, this code here, and um, this is uh, so here is one uh, function uh, for kind of using it. it's it's called decode, and we're going to take this. This is the coded text. This is the coded text from kind of my document here. And we want to try to decode this message, OK? And so I have right here, you know, basically a, a mapping is just going to be a, a letters. And so here's one kind of possible mapping. Uh, this is, again, from kind of the uh, HTNRYXB. That's, that's what I write written here, HTNRYXB. And basically, when you apply the uh, the mapping to this, it's going to say, well, if this was the mapping where basically A gets maps, A gets maps to H, and um, uh, K gets maps to Z, and things like that, then the then the original message must have been this because that's how we would produce this, uh, you know, the coded text that we see. All right. So this is what we're going to be using this function to try to. Uh, to help us figure this out, okay? And all it's doing is just going, you know, for I, for each character inside the um, the coded text, it's just subsetting it, and it's just checking if it's in the letters, and then it's looking up the corresponding mapping that's in the uh, kind of the current letter. Okay. All right. Um, I think I've already. I think I ran this war and peace thing on Monday, right? Where we kind of went through letter by letter. 
or line by line on War and Peace, and there was like 67,000 lines and stuff. Like you can run this and you can go through and read, read through the code here, but basically it's just gonna look at each kind of two letter combo. And then every two letter combo it sees in War and Peace, it adds one in, into the 27 by 27 matrix. And so anyway, um, it goes through and um, and it takes a little while to run. And I mean, I, I, I could run it, but I'm gonna just kind of load it up here. And so when I load this up, the transition matrix, the total tallies uh, look like this, okay? So, um, you know, A, B shows up this many times and we can see uh, how often did T followed by H show up. T followed by H showed up uh, 73,760 times and, um, you know, other, other common, um, common things. So what, were, what was the one we said K followed by B? K followed by B fo showed up seven times in all of War and Peace. Okay. So it happens, but not super often. Okay. K followed by C showed up 47 times, whereas C followed by K um, C followed by K showed up 2,600 times. Okay, so that's that's a lot more common. Okay, and and so um, what I've done is I've added so some of these combos showed up zero times, right? Like Q followed by V shows up never. Q followed by W. Q followed by X. Those never showed up. We don't want to ever have a zero probability because log of zero is going to give me negative infinity. So so that's a problem. So what, I'm, what I did to create kind of the probability matrix is I've added one to basically every single cell. I added one to every single one of them. And then the transition probability matrix is gonna be basically everything kind of divided by the sum. And so the transition probability matrix um, basically is, is a 27 by 27 thing, but you can look at this row for Q and we're, we have three times 10 to the negative seven. These are basically words that are letter combinations that never showed up, but we didn't want to give it a zero probability. So we just gave it a very small one of, of one, uh, you know, saying it appeared one time. And, and that corresponds to, I guess, three times 10 to the negative seven for a probability there. Okay, and then I think I showed at least the, um, the resulting plot. All right, and so it, I think I showed you guys this on Monday and we said, okay, TH shows up common, H and E and I and N and A and N and you know uh, E followed by R and stuff like that. So different letter combos are, are quite com common. EN and ED are also common and stuff like that. Okay, and so this is um, how we're going to evaluate two letter log probabilities is uh, we take whatever text that we have and we start off with a log probability value of zero, okay? Um, and then what we do is we're gonna just kind of go through every character in whatever string of text that we have. And we're gonna start off, um, we're gonna extract the current letter, okay? Which is, you know, we substring the, the, the text to just the current letter. And then we're going to look up in the table, the row, the row and column. So we're going to say, all right, what was the last letter? So we start off with nothing because, you know, so we go last letter and then the current letter. And we kind of just, we go to the row for the last letter and then the column for the current letter. Row is the last letter, column for the current letter. And then we're going to just kind of look it up in the table. We take the log of whatever value shows up in the table. Okay. And then we add that to the current log probability value. Okay. And we just basically cycle through that and, and we do that until we reach the end of the text. Okay. And then when we do that at the end, we return the log probability. So I can do something like two letter log probability of the text TH. Um, why, why didn't this work? Two letter log, did I do something wrong here? letter log probability no I'm worried that I did something wrong here. return 
returning zero. It was working earlier. I don't know. Okay. I maybe I have to debug some code here. But um text, 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 text. For a current letter. Hold on. Mm, I'm not I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. Well, um we will just did I do something wrong here? Current decoded text, two letter wrong, wrong front print, and current decoded text. Oh, it's because I have lowercase letters and the table only has capital letters. There we go. <laughs> okay, so if, if I do something like TH, it gives me um, negative 12. If I give it, um, QZ, it gives me a, a much more negative value, like negative 31.9. Okay. And, you know, other combinations, if we do like ER, that's more common. But if, um, uh, I don't know, so a less common would be EP and things like that. All right. Whereas like QQ, pretty, pretty uncommon, stuff like that. Okay. So, so anyway. So the, so the function's working fine, but it, this one requires all, all caps letters, okay? All right, um, here is, um, I'm gonna load up the lexical database, okay? And so just so you can see, oops, top of the lexical database, okay? And let's, um, all right. So basically it, it takes, you know, words and says, how common is this, this word? Okay. Why, why can't I, how do I force? Okay. So it just has a bunch of these things and it says, all right, the, the probability of abandon is one times 1.6 times 10 to the negative five abandonable. Okay. 3.36 times 10 to the negative nine. Okay, so it abandoned, abandoned Lee. Okay, so I, you know, I don't know when the last time you used the word abandonable in a sentence. It's, it's like, I'm sure we could craft a sentence, but it, it, it's not, okay. But anyway, this, this has a whole bunch of words and, um, and their relative probabilities. Okay, so that's, that's what this is stuff, right? So abbreviate, abbreviated, abbreviates, abbreviating, abbreviation, abbreviations, abbreviator, abbreviators, abbreviate, sure, something, okay? So, and all of these have different kind of probabilities and stuff. And it's got, so it's got a lot of these things, apparently 92,000 entries and stuff. All right, and so, you know, what this is gonna do is if you give it um, a word, so this is a one gram probability, if you say, all right, what's the probability of, um, Oh, I have to say lexical database. Okay, here it says the probability of the word the is something like that. The probability of the word uh, statistic is, I guess, a lot less common and things like that. Okay, um, and then log probability words. So, so uh, one gram probability will just look up one word in the lexical database and return that probability. Um, it has a another. There's um, another kind of thing where it's like, if it doesn't find a certain word, so if I give it um, just gibberish here, okay, uh, rather than returning zero, it returns a small value, like t one times 10 to the negative 10, okay? All right, and then log probability words, uh, you basically give it a sentence, okay? So you can say like, if you give it the, the phrase the, the, you know, it'll give you kind of the total probability of those words versus, you know, the, the car is going to be lower. And if you give it two kind of nonsense words, okay, it gives you, you know, very low probability and stuff. So it's going to kind of look through um, a bunch of words and, and give you things. And, you know, just the more words you have, the, the total log probability is going to be even lower. Okay, so... Um, I just kind of want to 
So here's my text and we've got this. And let me just kind of start my script here. All right, so we're gonna just start off with a kind of sample mapping. We're gonna, so um, this is another parameter that you can uh, tune is changing how the, the weight between the competition between optimizing two letter log combinations and optimizing um, finding real words. Okay. And, uh, and so right now, the current combined likelihood of our translated text is has a very low probability of negative 1,780. Okay. All right. Are you guys ready? Okay. So, so this is the Metropolis algorithm written right here. Okay. Um, we take our current mapping and I propose swapping two letters. Okay. And so the proposed mapping is just going to be the current mapping. And then I just kind of swap the two letters. Okay. I just swap the two letters. And then we take um, the proposed, proposed mapping and we run it into the decode function. And it's going to say, all right, this is the resulting text if, uh, if we apply the proposed mapping. So this is going to be the proposed decoded text. We calculate the two letter log probability, the log word probability of the proposed text. Okay, We compare that against kind of our current um, word probabilities, which is based on the current decoded text. So we have our current mapping and we have our current decoded text and we have the proposed mapping and we have our proposed decoded text. And we calculate kind of the, the, the log likelihood of kind of the, the current mappings and the proposed mapping. And then this part's the Metropolis algorithm. So we just do the comparison of basically uh, instead of u being less than the ratio, we're going to do log u less than the difference. And so if, if the log u of some random number is less than the difference between these, okay, then the proposed mapping becomes the mapping, the proposed decoded text becomes the current decoded text, and the proposed combined likelihood becomes the current combined likelihood, okay? Otherwise, we don't update anything, okay? And uh, and if and I'm also keep kind of keeping track of the the best the maximum combined likelihood that we've seen so far. If the current current likelihood is better than that, we'll we'll also improve that, and we'll we'll keep track of the best decoded text that we've seen so far. And so this is it's slightly different from the Metropolis algorithm in that I don't kind of produce back on the screen. Um, any kind of mappings that get rejected, and I only kind of show on the screen the ones that do get accepted. Okay, and so, um, and we're going to just kind of print on the screen the uh, the ones that that get accepted. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and and remember. So this is kind of our um, maybe some of our gibberish text here, and so it's going to kind of just start running through. This is all. It's still gibberish, but now like the letters have become something that at least resembles words. All right. So now we, we're getting real words here. We had eaten and are, are you guys able to see the text kind of fly by here? Okay. And so we've got uh, had to be on rot to be that CS the keist core weven tipen robwin PR the DPRG to sim in the all right so so it's still kind of um, it's not it's not great but I, I don't know does the text look kind of um, start to look familiar maybe or no like what or it, it's a famous quote can you guys figure this out okay so I've got Ayrton Haduet had to be on rot to be that this is the Mwestor, Bwestor, Weven, tips. I don't know, per the dry to sell in the Ciprums, Airy, Anos, all out. <laughs> Just give it some time, all right? We'll, um, uh, and, and so it's running. And, and, and basically, again, what it's doing is it's just swapping, swapping letters. And it's saying, if I swap the letters, is the result any better? Okay. What do we have? We have enter Hamlet, Ham, to pee or not to pee. That is the question. Whether it is 
Nopler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to tave arms against a sea of troubles and pie a causing opposing. It's got them and them. All right, I think we got it. Enter Hamlet, Ham, to be or not to be. That is the, okay, so we don't have question, but we have with a K, question, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to, it should say to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. So uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if we'll ever hit, oh, look at that, the question. It looks like, it looks like we got it. All right, so enter Hamlet. Hamlet says, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to, well, it should say, take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. So this is, you know, Hamlet's famous soliloquy where he's contemplating, you know, death and suicide or, you know, attacking his uncle for killing his dad. I don't know, spoiler alert, everybody dies, but um, that's, uh, but anyway, I thought this was pretty cool. Um, and and it's, it's applying, so, so as far as, you know, the Metropolis algorithm goes, so much of our examples have been just like generating numbers from like the normal distribution. And may, it may not have been interesting because it's like, well, we already know how to do the normal distribution and stuff like that. But the Metropolis algorithm really is, is useful in these contexts and situations where you really have no idea what the total kind of landscape looks like. And, and one of the beautiful things is that you can give it this terrible starting location and the Metropolis algorithm just kind of proposes things and it kind of takes things that, that say, hey, this is a little bit better. And if you, you know, it, it, it took us a while to get here, but, you know, we started off, we started off here, <laughs> which, was, which was totally gibberish. And, you know, within um, maybe a few of these things, you know, we're starting to get at least letter structures. Again, this is total gibberish and doesn't doesn't make sense, but we're getting letter structures that look kind of like English. And then after um, um, a few more iterations and stuff, we're, we're getting something that looks um, that looks real here. Okay. Um, I don't know if you had any questions. Um, you can play around with the code. Uh, it's posted on here. You can like make your own little ciphers um, and, uh, and see if it can kind of decipher them and stuff. Yeah, to be or not to be. So I was almost debating whether or not I should show you a clip from Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet where he's talking to himself in the mirror. But, um, but you guys should look it up, okay? A, a great literary work, okay? Um, if if you haven't, if you're not familiar. All right, um, let me give you your last quiz answer. A as an apple. A as an apple will be the uh, the last quiz answer, and uh, and that's it. That's all I've got for you guys today. So um, we'll see you guys on, I guess Monday. Have a good weekend. Um, I haven't even looked at the uh, the midterms yet, so I'm, I'm probably going to get together with my TAs and uh, and graders to grade either this weekend or sometime next week. So um, so so just be patient with the uh, the grades getting posted and stuff. All right, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I I think it's pretty cool, and uh, and we'll see you guys uh, see you guys on Monday.